What is up guys and I come again with another really cool tutorial for you guys where I share my magic CSS secrets with you. Now in today's video I'm going to teach you how to create reflections with only one line of code to achieve things like this or in a different color. And that's exactly what we're going to be building today. Now you can do this with anything. You can do it with a div, you can do it with an image, you can do it with some text, you can do it with any kind of element that you want. You can just reflect it and you can reflect it in all different ways. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. Now, if you want to learn more of my CSS magic and you want to see all these tutorials, make sure you smash the subscribe button. But now, because I can see you all smiling and waiting for this, I'm going to jump right into it and show you exactly how it's done. So one thing I forgot to mention is that this is not compatible on Internet Explorer or Edge, but who the hell uses them anyway, so it doesn't really matter at all. Uh, so not to waste much time, I've already created a main.html file and I've already created a main.scss file, which I am running a compiler on. So, so it compiles from SCSS to CSS uh, so the browser can understand. I have also made an image Actually, I haven't made it. I, I just got it off Google. And I removed all the background to create this a PNG so we can actually style our own background for this image uh, and make it look all fancy and nice. And that's basically everything that you need to do. Now, in order to start, I just click exclamation mark and tab and I get my uh, boilerplate for HTML. Now, remember to always link your CSS file. Otherwise, you're going to be sitting there thinking, why is my CSS not working? Well, it's probably because you haven't linked it to your HTML. Now I'm going to give this a title of uh, reflection magic, uh, more so actually CSS magic because today I'm going to be a CSS magician and teach you some cool skills. And what do we want in our body? Well, we first of all, we're going to create that background and that background was made of two layers, the top layer and the bottom layer. So I'm going to use two divs for that. I'm going to use a div and give it a class of top makes kind of sense and then we're going to create another div and give it a class of bottom and close it off and that's the HTML we need for the time being we're going to add an image in here but that will come later let's move on to our SCSS file and let's reference the body first uh, basically when I put my image in I kind of want it to be in the center later on so what we're going to do is give this a uh, a display of flex and then we're just going to align everything horizontally and vertically by using justify content center and align items center now we have to remember that body has a default margin and we just don't want that so we're just going to give it a margin of zero now nothing would have happened at this point uh, it's the, the page is still going to be blank but what we can do now is reference this first top class and then this bottom class and we're going to start to see some stuff so i'm going to call the top class and I'm going to give it a height of like 65 viewport height and a width of 100 viewport width. Now, I want to give it a background color. And from what I know, uh, it always looks nice when you're creating a, a kind of product reflection like this uh, to use a radial gradient. So I'm going to give it a background and I'm going to say a radial gradient in the shape of a circle, which is going to focus on that on those swatches that we're going to add later on. And I'm going to use my favorite yellow color that Apple uses, which is 255, 214, 10, I believe, uh, for the center. And then we're going to create that radial gradient to some dark gray. Let's give it a 15, 15, and 15. Okay, let's have a look at the result. Refresh. And this is what we get. So we have a light yellow background and then kind of gradients out to a dark gray that we have specified. Now we need to work on that bottom and this is going to be like a table for us. So here I'm going to reference uh, the bottom class and I'm going to give it a height of uh, 35 viewport height to make it 100 in total. Then we're going to give it a width of 100 viewport width, just the same. And then the background color, we're going to kind of keep the same uh, the only thing that we're going to change is this RGB dark gray. Uh, I feel like it will look a little bit better if we just make it a tiny bit darker. So I'm going to change that and then I'm going to jump onto the web browser. And this is what we get. Ooh, 
What happened? Well, here we use display flex, and as I said before in my previous tutorials, when you use flex, it by default aligns everything horizontally, but we want everything to align vertically. So we'll jump back into the code, and for our body tag, we're going to specify a flex direction of column. And here we go. We have a really cool effect where we kind of have a default like table. And obviously that radial gradient, it seems like something is bouncing off. And this is the kind of thing that we wanted to achieve. So now we can jump back and we can actually add the image and I'll show you how to reflect this. Uh, so let's jump back into the code and let's go into our main.html file to add the image. So for that, we're going to create another div, a, a wrapper for that image in this instance, uh, where we're going to give it a class of uh, image wrapper. Kind of makes sense, very logical. Now inside here, we're going to add our image tag and we're going to specify to the source, so the location of that file, where I can have the my image folder and then watches.png, it automatically recognizes that for me. So now that we added our image tag, well, what will happen? Well, let's have a look. And uh, well, the image is not here. Well, no, it is. If you scroll down, it basically got pushed to the bottom of everything because of that display flex. But what we actually want is we want these watches to be right in the center here. So what do we need to do to tackle that? Well, we need to refer to our image wrapper class in our CSS and just give it a dot to say that it's a class. And then we need to give this a position of absolute, meaning that it's going to align to the very top left corner of the browser. But in this case, because we already have our body and we gave it a display flex and we aligned everything in the center, our image is going to appear right in the center like so. Now, this is way too big and we wanna make it a little smaller. So we just have to refer to the image and give it a size. So here I'm going to say uh, that our image tag uh, basically, we're going to say that it has a width of, I don't know, let's say 800 pixels seems like a good idea. This is starting to look good. However, uh, I don't like the fact that this uh, watch obviously is on the table, as, we li as I like to call it, the table. I want it to be above the table. So I want to move it up so I can give it a negative margin. And then we're going to get that reflection. And that's what's going to make this kind of come to life. Uh, so this image wrapper, let me give it a margin top of minus 200 pixels. And let's have a look at that. And actually that seems to be just perfect, uh, just above the table. Now onto the really fun part that you guys have been waiting for, how to add this reflection, how to make it look like it's actually bouncing off the table, like the table is shiny. Well, let's jump into our CSS. Now there is a command called WebKit box reflect, and that's given some attributes. The first attribute is how do we want to reflect the image? It can be below, it can be above, it can be to the left or to the right. So we want the reflection to be below. The second value that we give this is the offset. So what do we want the offset to be? Well, at this point, I'm just going to give it an offset of zero because I don't know what it's going to look like. We'll adjust this in a second. Now, the second thing is I want to give this a linear gradient, meaning that the image will kind of fade. So it will start quite bold and strong because it's on top of the table and it's going to fade away as it obviously gets further away. So here we can specify a linear gradient. I want it to fade to transparent, meaning basically zero opacity. And then I'm going to give it a color that I want it to fade from, which is white. And I'm going to do 255, 255, 255. And the opacity of that, I'm going to set to 0 0.8. Uh, I feel like that will look cool. Okay, well, now that we did that, let's look at the outcome. And wow, we've got a perfect reflection where it starts bold and it kind of starts fading away into transparent and kind of white. So it gives this that effect. Now, I don't think this reflection is good enough. I think we need to give it a little bit of an offset and I think it needs to be a little bit higher. So I reckon about 40 pixels by the looks of it and it should make it look quite nice. So here, instead of offset of zero, I can specify minus 40 pixels. And then when we jump into it for the final outcome, and oh my good, that looks perfect. Look at that, guys. It literally is like a photo shoot if you were to take a picture uh, of the watch in a professional photography studio uh, where we basically made everything with CSS apart from the image. However creative you want to be, 
this is exactly how to do it. Now, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I hope you learned something new. I'm really happy that I can share this with you. Uh, if you did enjoy it, make sure you smash the thumbs up button, make sure you subscribe. Now, I'm going to be releasing hopefully two tutorials every week. So if you wanna learn more, if you wanna learn how to create those perfect personal portfolios, make sure you subscribe to this channel. But for now, guys, as always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Thank you.